So in this example, we have a bond that we're given all the information. Here we have a 10% coupon bond, and this is how we typically describe a bond. We'll say this is a 10% bond. Then when we say this is a 10% bond, the 10% refers to the coupon rate. It has a par value of $1,000. Um, the market interest rate is 10%. So remember that the market interest rate is the yield to maturity. So to find the value of the bond, we need a few things. We need to know the recurring cash flow amount. So the first is the coupon payment. So we know that this bond has a 10% coupon rate and it has a face value of $1,000. So 10% on $1,000 is $100. But this bond is out, makes semi-annual payment. So that means that we have to divide this number by two. So this means that this bond will pay us $50 every six months. And then at the, we know that the face value or the part value is a thousand dollars and this is something that is useful to write down if you're doing homework at the end of the chapter and you do not see a face value or a power value given assume that is a thousand dollars so anytime you're missing that information you can assume that is a thousand dollars um it has 20 years to maturity so um because it has is a semi-annual bond so that means the investment horizon is 40 periods because you'll get your coupon you'll get 40 coupon payments and then the interest rate is 10 percent so that is our yield to maturity again because it's paid on a semi-annual basis that is five percent every six months so now we have all the information we need fifty dollars is our annuity payment the $1,000 is our future value. Very important, both of these are info. If you buy a bond, you'll receive $50 every six months. You'll also receive $1,000 at maturity. N is 40, the number of time period, and the discount rate, interest rate is 5%. You're computing the price of the bond. So the price of the bond today is to compute the present value. So go ahead and compute that. Pause the video if necessary. Okay, welcome back. Did you get $1,000? You do. If you do, you get the right answer. So this is a very special case. It's a special case because we uh, the, fa the face value and the price is the same. Uh, we'll explain what, why that is in a minute. Bef but before we go to that, uh, I want to take one moment to look at the difference between the income return and the capital gain. So you pay $1,000 for this bond, but how much that is going to be returned to you in the form of income, which is your coupon payment, and how much of that is going to be returned to you as um, your face value at the end. So we're gonna take a look at the component of the two components of your cash flow. So first is the coupon payment itself. So remember that the coupon payment is $50 every six months. And our discount rate is 5% every six months. And we receive 40 of these coupon payments. How much of that is worth? So if you compute the present value, you see that the present value of the coupon amount, so go ahead, pause the video and compute the present value of the coupon amount. Did you get $857.95? Good job. So you pay $1,000 for the bond. What this means is that $858 approximately of that $1,000 is returned to you in the form of coupon payment. So this is only $50, but it's $50 every six months for 40 times. Compare that to the $1,000, which is a much higher amount, you can, let's compute the present value of that as well. So the face value is worth $1,000, but you get that only once, so that's your future value is a lump sum at the end of the of the bond's uh, maturity. You have to wait 40 period 
So 20 years for the period to get $1,000. How much is that worth today? So go ahead and compute the present value. Did you get $142.05? Congratulations. So see, when you add the two component together, when you add the $857.95 and $142.05, not surprisingly, you get $1,000 back. So what this tells us is that of the $1,000 that you pay for the bond, $858 is returned to you in the form of coupon payment. Only $142 of your $1,000 investment is returned to you in the form of the face value in the end. So for this bond, a much greater proportion of your investment is going to be returned to you in the form of coupon payment. Um, when a bond's price, the present value is $1,000, which is exactly the same as the future value or the face value. This is a bond that is selling at par. So this is a very special situation. And this only happens, um, this only happens when the bond is has the same, the coupon rate is the same as the yield to maturity. So uh, we'll take a look at an example to see what will happen if the interest rate changes and the coupon rate is no longer the same as the market interest rate. How would that affect the price of the bond? So let's say market interest rate increases to 12% per year. So we're working with the same bond. So this is information from before. So market interest rate goes up from 10%. Remember that market interest rate is yield to maturity. It went from 10% to 12% per year. So that means it's 6% every six months. Everything else remains the same. Your coupon is still $50. And this bond still has a face value of $1,000, so that's our future value. And it still has 40 payment left. So the only thing that changes is that interest rate is now 6%. So go ahead and compute the price of the bond, the new price of the bond. Did you get $849? So first of all, we can confirm a theory that we learned from prior chapters. That is when interest rate goes up, present value goes down. So the present value of the price of the bond go from $1,000 to $849. So in this case, the price is less than the face value. That means that the bond is selling at a discount. So in here, the term discount does not mean this is a good or a bad bond. It just simply means that the, bond, um, the bond's price is now less than the face value. And this happens if and only if the yield to maturity is now greater than the coupon rate. And you can see that in our numerical example because coupon rate stays at 10%. Remember that coupon rate doesn't change once the bond is issued. So till coupon rate remains at 10%, but yield to maturity has gone up to 12%. And we saw that now the price is less than the face value. That's, the, that's one of the um, good things about finance theory. You can always demonstrate or illustrate a finance theory through a numerical example. Another way to look at this is think about what's going on in the marketplace. You have a bond that has coupon of 10%. But now every new bond in the market, everybody else new to the market is offering 12%. So your bond is no longer competitive. If everybody else is giving out 12% and you're only giving 10%, the only way you can compete is to lower your price. So the price has to go down from $1,000 to $849 in order for your bond to compete with the new bonds in the market, which now offers 12% per year. Okay, let's take a look at um, an, another example using the same bond. So same coupon, same face value, same time to maturity. But we want to see what happens when market interest rate goes down. So in this example, 
yeah, market interest rate decreases. So instead of going up, it goes down. It goes down from 10% to 8% per year. So 8% per year means it's 4% every six months. Remember, all the other information remains the same. In other words, the coupon payment is still $50 every six months. Face value is $1,000, and it has 40, 40 payments left until maturity. But the U to maturity now is 4% every six months. So this is the only thing that's changed. Let's take a look at what happened to the price of the bond. Now remember that interest rate decreases. When interest rate goes down, we expect present value to go up. Did you get $1,197.93? Good job. So we show in here that when interest rate goes down, bond prices go up. This is something that we learned from finance theory. And when that happens, when the price of the bond is greater than the par value of the bond, we consider this a premium bond. And again, the premium here does not mean that it's a higher quality bond, but rather that you're paying a premium to buy the bond because the price is higher than the par value. And the reason you're paying a premium is because the U to maturity, the market interest rate, is now less than the coupon rate on this bond. So in other words, now you have a bond that is offering 10% per year, when everybody else in the market is offering 8%. Because you're giving investor more than what is going, what uh, everybody else in the market is giving the, is, is offering, you will be able to charge a higher price because you're giving investor more in coupon and that higher price turns into a premium. So those are some of the fundamental pricing, uh, bond pricing theory that you want to remember. Another important theory that we demonstrate in our, uh, in our example is that as interest rate goes up, so as interest rate goes increases, bond prices decreases. So there's an inverse relationship between interest rate, U to maturity, and bond prices. And the reason is because U to maturity is the discount rate and bond prices is the present value. So this is the same thing that we have learned. Now that you have mastered the calculation of bond prices and bond value and have an understanding between the relationship of bond prices and, and U to maturity, let's take a look at how we can compute um, other variables associated with bond valuation.